How's it going everybody? Brian Cusco here at Triple B. And who are you, bud? Noah. Yeah, it's Noah. Today we're gonna take you guys down to Southern California for the Pomona Reptile Super Show. You're watching Triple B TV. Don't play with my scissors. Okay, bud, have fun. Okay. So Noah had some other important business to take care of, but we'll see him again a little later. When was the very first reptile show? We don't actually have an answer for you this week. We want you to do some research on your own and see if you can figure it out. Leave your answer in a comment down below and check back in a future episode to see what we came up with. Thanks for watching. So this was our second time down to the Pomona Super Show and we're planning to do it every year because it's a lot of fun and we're gonna we get a hotel room right there at the event and the morning of the event we just woke up so excited before the sun even rose and just kind of hung out in the hotel ate some breakfast getting ready for the show to open so just like the show is two days we're gonna break this down into two episodes so next week will be the snake in the grass episode as it'll be the second Sunday of the month and then the week after that, we'll continue the Pomona show and highlight some of the vendors that I had a chance to talk with while I was there. And today, we're gonna highlight some of the cool animals that were around the show. Obviously, I couldn't get to all of them. It's such a big show, there's no way we could ever see every single animal with the camera because it's not like we have a camera crew. It's just me with a camera and I'm chasing Noah around everywhere. But there were some really cool animals that I thought were different and we're gonna highlight on some of them. And then we'll also take a look at the US Arc auction that takes place on Saturday night after the first day of the show. And it's a lot of fun, there's always some food and drinks, and it's a great way to help support the reptile community. If you keep any kind of reptiles at all and you're not helping support US Arc, you probably should get on that because if you wanna keep keeping your reptiles, these guys are on the forefront fighting for that right. And that auction got a little bit violent. There was some blood drawn, to say the least. <laughs> Might want to stick around and check it out. It gets a little interesting. All right, let's go take a look at some of these cool animals. So this is a Dumarils boa, or Acrantophus dumarelli. They're found on Madagascar. Their diet in the wild consists of birds, lizards, small mammals, and even other snakes sometimes. They're known to do fairly well in captivity, and they're really cool animals and fairly docile, and they're a decently sized snake, which I think is pretty cool. This next snake here is the elephant trunk snake, or Acrocortis geronicus. I thought this animal was exceptionally cool. They're an aquatic snake that can be found in Indonesia, their loose baggy skin with sharp scales help it grasp slippery prey items such as fish and frogs. This next animal here is a dog toothed cat snake or Boiga cynodon, endemic to Asia. And I won't go into too much detail on them because Dan from DM Exotics is going to do that for us in the second part of this series. Just a really overall beautiful snake. This next snake here is fairly well known. The green tree python, Morelia viridis. They also hail from Indonesia, New Guinea, and are an arboreal species, and they're super cool. I would love to have one of these someday, and I'm sure it's in the books. This next snake here, I personally think was the coolest snake at the show. It's a paradise flying snake, or Chrysopelia paradisi. And they hail from Southeast Asia and are also rear fanged venomous. And the cool thing about them is as their name implies, they flatten their belly out and can glide from treetop to treetop, sometimes distances up to 300 feet. And that is incredible. I can't imagine 
keeping one of these snakes without having hundreds of acres available to allow these guys to fly from treetop to treetop like they do in the wild, that would just be amazing. But it would require a lot of space, so I don't ever see myself having one of these snakes, but nevertheless, I thought it was freaking sweet. Now this next snake we're gonna highlight here are carpet pythons. And I think they are also super cool snakes. They get to a decent size. Those heat pits in the front of their face are just so huge and pronounced. It just looks like a, such a, it just looks like such a badass. And that big fat head, super cool. And we'll be hearing a little bit from Todd from Psychotic Exotics of Kerry King's company that really specializes right now in carpet pythons. Now I don't think I could have gone to a reptile show and not highlighted on at least one ball python. Now of course, there are plenty of ball pythons all over the place, and I wasn't gonna go around to film every single one of them, but one that I thought was really cool was this super banana. And Glenn from Rusty's Balls will be talking about these in the following episode. So we'll let him do that. But obviously the cool thing about these guys is all the babies are guaranteed to be banana. It's pretty sweet, and it's a pretty sweet animal in itself. All right, now let's go peek in on what happens at a US Ark auction. We are a nonprofit 501c6 charitable organization. For those in California, three years ago in 2013, we actually amended a bill, AB339, that would have made reptile shows illegal in California. So, actually, if we hadn't done that, the last three years of reptile super shows would not have been possible. That's an example of what we do at the state level. We're suing the federal government, for those of you who aren't familiar. We actually were granted a preliminary injunction by a district court that said FWS did not have jurisdiction to tell us that we couldn't move green anacondas and articulated pythons across state lines. We are now over two years and a month into that process and FWS has filed for a bill and some of their animal rights buddies, HSUS, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Center for Biological Diversity have joined in, saying that we should not be able to have these animals too. Uh, so we gotta get through the appeal process, then we'll get back to the actual lawsuit. So this could go on another two or three years. But again, the fact that we got a preliminary injunction is huge. It impressed a lot of people in other sectors of the pet industry, and it, it's kind of a big deal for, for those that don't realize that. Kind of a big deal. And now I like to wake everybody up after boring everybody. Uh, we have some uh, possibly chemically enhanced gummy snake candies. The, the humidity level in here is extremely high. And, and it's possible that they've been soaking in a concoction. So if, if you don't know what any of that means, you don't need to be bidding on these. So it weighs about 14 pounds. Donated from Shar, correct? Southern California Herp Association and Rescue. We'll start the bid at 20 bucks. 20 right there, I'll bid 30, I need 40 bucks. 50 going once, 50 going twice. So 40 bucks to the bearded wonder in the back of the room. From Angel's Exotic Reptiles, we have a Spider City Granite Het Caramel Albino Mel Ball. $200 snake from Angel's Exotics. We'll start off at 20 bucks. 20 right there, I need 30 bucks. 30 right there, I need 40. 40 right there, I need 50. 50 right there, I need 60. 60, I need 70. 70, I need 80. 80 going once. 80 going twice. So in order to kind of get this kicked up a little bit, from Zilla, I want to present Zilla with a check for $25,000. <laughs> And just so everybody knows, it's made out to the United States Association of Reptile Keepers and not Phil Goss. <laughs> Alright, one of the highest items of the night from Carrie King of Slayer, we have item 23. So this is a drum skin signed by all the current members of Slayer, including Carrie, who owns Psychotic Exotics, for those who aren't aware, they're set up at the show. Uh, we had one of these at the last Super Show, I believe it sold for 520 bucks. 550. Five thousand dollars at some point. Ninety right there. Eighty right there. I need ninety bucks. Ten right here. Twenty right there. Thirty right there. Thirty-five. Forty. Forty-five. I need fifty bucks. Fifty right there. I need sixty bucks. Wow. Sixty. Sixty dollars right there. Sensational pets. I need seventy bucks. 
150 dollar value for Brian Cusco. We'll start it out at 20 bucks. 20 right there, 30 right there. I need 40 bucks. 40 there, 50 there, 60 there. I need 70 bucks. All right, we have the highest donation of the night. Highest dollar value donation of the night. Item 51 from Jay Brewer, prehistoric pets. We have a $1,250 reticulated python. Sold in the back, 70 bucks. Sold to Kimberly Paws for 90 bucks. Sold Tommy, 100 bucks. Sold to Craig Gagne. We have a pair of Kukri snakes. Highly venomous. Anyway, I got one of these out thinking I was a big shot. Actually, I got both of these out thinking I was a big shot. They say the Eagle show. I bled until the next morning. So these are the same snakes that sold at the San Diego show. They are marked less pain and more pain. We're going to start with less pain. Less pain is not happy. Oh, less pain. Hello. Hey, that little snake, you can see what happened already. This is from less pain. I would seriously rather take a bite from a nine and a half foot boa than one of these little guys. That, that, that little kid got me in the meat. It didn't feel good, I'm not gonna lie. But anyway, along with the recurves and mildly venomous, they also have an anti-coagulant in their blood. So it's this is less pain. I'm gonna stare at more pain for a second. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment down below and let us know how we're doing. And we'll see you next week with Snakes in the Grass. You guys take care.